Hey everybody, welcome to Life at Sunny Lee with Kathy Jarvis. And it has been another very, very busy week. Um, Saturday, we went to the Purdue-Syracuse game. I have not been back to campus since well, since middle son graduated from there. So it's been quite a while since I've been to, up there. And it has changed a lot. The one thing I noticed I had not changed was the nighttime lighting. It's still very dark walking around that campus at night. And I'm really surprised about that. You'd think that safety would be one of the things that they would be uh, more concerned about. But it's quite dark at night. But a lot of the campus has changed. I didn't really get a chance to explore much. We got we left here about 2.30 and got there, oh, by 5.30, I think it was, met our, met our middle son there, and went over and got something to eat before going to the game. a bit disappointing we lost <laughs> we lost big time 35 to 20 but it was still a fun time we did have to come back home that night um, we got home about 2 30 and the reason we had to come back home was because of the dog um, we had laid uh, rugs out on top of the carpet in case she had any accidents but she was really nice she did not have any but she was waiting at the door ready to go outside and go potty we got home and so that was a nice trip and we had lots of fun um, Sunday we skipped church of course since we got in so late that night and um, I spent the day cleaning upstairs it was one of my things on my list that I've been meaning to do for a while and hadn't got done and our middle son had decided to stay overnight at Zionsville and he did not get much sleep that night so he called and asked if he could come home and spend the night and of course he's always welcome I mean he's got keys to the house he can come in wherever he wants to and um, so I had got the upstairs all done right before he got home and decided to uh, change the tree we keep our tree out all year round we change it with the season so I changed it and put the uh, Halloween decorations on it and um, was working on that when um, got a phone call from my son again asking saying that he was stopping at the Columbus well my husband had gone up to was going up to our middle our oldest son's house to help with the yard work and he decided to stop in at Columbus and check on Doug and first thing I know I got a phone call saying that they were coming back home so he was so tired that he was falling asleep at the wheel so his dad just brought him home and then my husband and I turned around, went back to Columbus, and picked up his car and brought it home. And while we were up at Columbus, I decided to stop in at Petco and check out a few things. I won some fish for the little fish pond, and I wanted to find a flea comb for the cats. Because it's that time of the year, all my cats are outdoor cats, but they do come into the garage at night, into their different crates that they sleep in at night. And they were starting to have some fleas. And we have like 10 cats, barn cats. Well, actually we have 11. One sleeps outside in a crate outside. And the others sleep in the crates inside. And um, they were having, bringing in fleas. And I couldn't have that. So I was looking for a flea comb that I could 
comb them each night before they came in. And then I have a, a spray that I use. It's a do-it-yourself spray. But it does kill the fleas and it repels the fleas. And I've been using that on them for the last oh, four or five days. But I wanted to find the comb because it wasn't, it was still, they still had some fleas. So, but they didn't have any comb. They didn't have, I was looking for a commercial flea spray to spray on. They didn't have either one at there, but they did have the fish. So I got five little fish that I put into the fish pond that night. Okay, on Monday, our son went back to his apartment. And I went and got my hair taken care of, got a haircut and all that good stuff. And then we went to town and that's when I found the flea comb. And so I've been working with the cats, getting that done. Didn't find many fleas on some of them, but the white cats seem to have the most fleas. The big fluffy white cat, Peaches, had the most. And I use that comb on them before they come in at night, and I use the comb on them when they go out in the morning, and I'm finding less and less fleas on them each day, which is good. And I don't have the fleas. I spray the cages down, crates down each uh, morning, and the fleas have pretty much been eradicated. So. We're waiting for the next round because I'm sure there's some flea eggs there that will be hatching. So I'm continuing to spray for the next weeks or so to make sure that we get all of them out and keep spraying the cats. And they came out this morning not scratching or anything, so that's a good, good sign. We went up to our oldest son's house and finished working on his yard. He is working so many hours with two jobs that it's almost impossible for him to keep up with his yard work. Plus his mower had broken and it's still up. We brought it down to our uh, repair shop that we use and they're still working on it. So we've been going up and taking care of his yard while he's uh, been working and trying to get under control. He had I don't think he's really had much chance to work in it for a while. We had to cut some limbs last week and they've got a really nice little system up there. Um, they have this tree service, or I guess you would call it, that comes around. I don't know if it's weekly or whatever, but on Tuesdays, they drive the, on last Tuesday, anyway, this Tuesday, they came by and they pick up a yard limbs or anything that you have by the curb and they shred them and put them in to um, take them away. So we got there just in time. I mean, we lucked out. Thank God for this. I mean, it was definitely a clear blessing from him because as we were fall, pulling into, his, going to go into his subdivision, there was a, that truck was in front of us. And we thought, man, that's what we need. And we didn't even realize that on Tuesday, we thought it was Wednesday that they did this. We did not realize they did it on Tuesday. And when it turned into his subdivision and we saw it stop at one of the uh, houses that had limbs in front, we hightailed it over to his house and started dragging out limbs. And his he has a nice neighbor who's retired. I don't remember his name. Um, but he came out and helped us drag the uh, leaf the tree limbs over to the curb and we got most of them drugged there by the time the truck got there and by the time they got the pallets that we already had done we finished with the other pal so we got his yard all that big pile completely taken care of which was a blessing because we had taken our chainsaw we were thinking we were going to have to cut it up into small pieces and um, bring a lot of it home or and you know use it for firewood or put it into our wood pile around back we have a pile next to the woods that we just pile wood limbs and stuff on it's a habitat for the wild animals that's what it's for and um, it's slowly decomposing but it's our way of helping out the wildlife it's away from the house in 
an area that they can be in without being disturbed. So we thought we were going to have to be chopping that stuff up and bringing it home. So it's really <coughs> wonderful to have it. The car just went by and the dog's barking. We, it was wonderful to have that done. And so we got that done in record time. We did use the chainsaw for some of the other things. There was a tree that was growing right next to the fence that as it continued to grow, it would have destroyed the fence. So we took that down. And while he was doing that and took some more limbs down, while he was doing that, I trimmed the hedges and weeded underneath those, deadheaded the roses, and um, cleaned up a couple of shrubs that had some um, bad, uh, had some dead things in them. I had to clean up and get that cleaned up. So his yard is, as far as I'm concerned, it's done for the year. There are two branches that we may go back and take down, but we want to talk to him first to make sure that it's okay to take those branches down because they're quite huge. And there's a couple of water sprouts that need to be taken off the tree. But the main yard itself looks a lot better and I think it's, I think the major, majority of the work is done. It's just a matter of maintaining it, which shouldn't be as hard as the first time. It's not going to take us two or three days to get that done from now on. So that's good. So we got that done. And on Wednesday, Wednesday he went to town and got some stuff. And I decided to just take it easy. I had cut my leg on Tuesday working on that wood pile. And there was a deep splinter in there that I had to work and try to get out. And it hurts. I'll have to admit that. I think I got most of the splinter out. But there's still a part of it that I think. I'm not for sure because it's so deep I can't tell for sure. All I know is that area hurts really bad and it's dark. Very, very dark. So I'm soaking it in Epsom salts and um, watching it. Hoping it will fester up and come out. If not, I'll have to either dig deeper or have it looked at one way or the other but it did bleed well after I got the first part out so we'll see what happens there so I took the day off basically I spent most of the day setting holding a kitty cat and having the puppy outside just she's been cooped up well ever since Saturday she's been in the house almost constantly because we've been running so much so, leaving her out here on the front porch, and she likes to be around me. If I leave, she tries to get up and follows. So, I figure it's just a nice time to relax and just let my leg heal a little and kind of enjoy the nice, cool weather. It's supposed to have gone up into 80s, high 80s today, but there is such a nice, beautiful breeze. Because I just decided to wait that day and relax so I will get a little bit done in fact I did get a little bit done I um, got some laundry done and I got some needy uh, things weeded around the porch but basically took the day off decided to fix supper at home and that was a change we hadn't eaten at home for almost a week Maybe a week and a half because we've been running so much. So Wednesday was just kind of a downtime. I just took the time to relax a little. Thursday, Thursday I didn't do anything at all. Just kind of waited around until 3 o'clock for a doctor's appointment to get this taken care of. Who would have thought that I wouldn't be able to get that out? It is deep. I don't know if it's a thorn or a wood or what, but there's one there and there's one there. And as you can tell, it's a little bit swollen and a little bit red. And I've worked since Tuesday trying to get it out and decided it was time to go and have it professionally taken out. Well, 
it wasn't a bad idea going to the doctor. It took him about 15 minutes of digging and priding to get that splinter out. He says he's pretty sure he got it all out. But he's put me on uh, five days of antibiotics because it is, there it is quite red. And there's another small one in there which he thinks will work its way out. He didn't think there was any need to go after it. So, because he couldn't, he couldn't feel it. It was so small. He thinks it'll come out on its own. So, need to say, I um, didn't get anything done on Thursday. Uh, Friday, the guy came out to look at the shed about the door to give surprises on both the overhead door, well, overhead door, the roll-up door and the regular garage door. Give us a price on both those so we can decide what we're going to do about that. And then after that, we went to town and got some groceries. So that is what we've been up to this week. So, it's been a busy week. An unexpected um, break <laughs> with the uh, resting for the uh, splinter. It really, really hurt. Um, what was it? Thursday? No. Wednesday night. Every time I touched it, I'd wake up because it hurt. So, yeah. It definitely was getting infected. So, it still hurts, but it's, at least it's out there and it is on its way to healing. Uh, Epsom salts and meals worn in the antibiotic is what I was told. So, hope you have a good week. Hope we have a nice week ahead without too much hot weather. They're calling for hot weather again. The last couple of days it's been warm, though it's been a nice a little overcast and a nice little cool breeze. So it's been nice. But they're calling for hot weather again next week. So hopefully you have a good week. Uh, remember, dream big, follow that dream. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.